Okay, well, good evening, everyone. My name is Kia Murphy. I'm the director for the Department of Special Education Services, and I bring you greetings this evening. I also wanted to let um, Amy Kropp um, and Diana Wiles introduce themselves. Good evening. I'm Amy Kropp. I'm the director of Pre-K Special Programs and Related Services. And the reason that Kia smiled extra loud, extra wide when she uh, introduced herself is that the Board of Education has appointed her officially, as of last week, our Director of Special Education Services in Montgomery County Public Schools. So we're all very happy to, to remove the acting from her title and know that she's here with us to stay. Good evening, uh -huh. everyone. Good evening. I'm Diana Wiles. I'm the Associate Superintendent the proud associate superintendent of the Office of Special Education. Um, I'm happy to be here with you this evening. We have a um, wonderful agenda set for you. Um, and I will be around in case anyone has any questions. Okay. So um, I also would like to um, provide an opportunity for the CCAC chairs to introduce themselves this evening. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, congratulations, Kia. Um, I'm happy to see so many familiar faces and welcome to our new faces. Uh, as you heard, I'm Amy Bloom. Um, I have uh, two boys. One is in Bethesda Elementary where we still miss Miss Heinze. <laughs> and our um, older son is a seventh grader at Westland Middle School and he receives special education services. Uh, so just, you know, a welcome to everyone and thank you for being here. And um, I feel like people have definitely been reaching out a little more to the co-chairs and more people are doing public testimony. So uh, keep it coming. We, we like hearing from you and we like the advocacy. Okay, we're going to move right into our agenda. <laughs> All right. Um, so we do have some announcements um, from Mary Beth Monsoranis, and I believe that in her place, um, Stacey Heinze was going to share some information. Um, we also have some information from the Autism Society. And then we'll also go into breakout rooms to talk about transitions, transition from pre-K to K, from elementary to middle, middle to high school, and high school to post-secondary. Um, we certainly want to make time to listen to um, any announcements from our partners in the community. So we will do that as well. Next slide, please. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank I'm here. Oh, you're here, Mary Beth. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sitting in the um, area of Blair High School. So hopefully you can hear me. And if I'm shouting, please give me a sign because it's super loud. Um, but uh, it's great to see everybody tonight. Uh, thanks so much for being here. Um, I'm just going to share a few things. The first is that the um, Maryland Special Education Parent Involvement Survey is open. Um, the, the rationale for like why we do it is listed here and um, we've included the, the link. I, I will tell you that the survey literally takes a maximum of eight minutes. It's super quick. Um, there is an opportunity for you to provide more feedback uh, in written form, which we also you know use and love. But if you are pressed for time, um, just filling out the survey and giving us your thoughts on the questions as they're asked is, is very, very helpful. Um, and if you go to the next slide, I can tell you that in looking at last year's um, data, we actually used the information that we received to, um, to, to respond, basically. We uh, developed action plans, we wrote improvement plans, um, and so some of the results that, that we got were around parents requesting very specific kinds of training, right? They wanted to know about how can I support my child at home? They wanted to know um, what are some community resources that are out there? Um, they wanted to know about opportunities to um, meet other families. So um, as a result of looking at those things, we specifically designed our parent workshops this year to match those requests. So we hosted one with um, Chad, the um, autism, I mean, the ADHD folks. Um, and they did an amazing presentation uh, earlier this month. We've done um, workshops on the IEP process. Um, we've done workshops on different community activities. Uh, we also created the family resource page, which is Always, we're, we're revising it and adding to it, but it's a great starting point when families are looking for 
community resources match to a specific need. Um, we also send out a monthly or bi-monthly bulletin um, that highlights uh, meetings that are happening for other organizations. So um, that will be posted on my page, the family support page um, on Monday. Um, and then for in response to a preschool uh, request on the surveys about meeting other families, we actually organized uh, play dates where, you know, families were taught sort of how to engage kids in play when they're with other kids and then it provided families with the opportunity to meet each other. So we really do use your information. It's, um, it's an important way for us to find out like how we're meeting your needs and sort of where we're not. Um, so, and it's all about the involvement, right? Getting parents involved in the process. So your five to eight minutes on the survey really does help us to understand ways that we can better support you. Next slide, please. Um, this is our biggest news, big, big news. So all of you who wrote down a different date, get rid of it. We are having our special education family resource fair on Saturday, May the 11th. We had to change our original date. Saturday, May the 11th, same time from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m., same location, Montgomery Blair High School. So um, at the fair this year, we will have workshops for parents. They'll be pretty short. Um, we will have representatives from different community organizations um, that will, we're gonna set it up just like last year for those of you who attended, but if you didn't attend, it's set up sort of like a college fair, right? With the tables and you can sort of go to the tables that you are interested in uh, learning a little bit more about. Um, we'll also have uh, folks from MCPS there as well. There will be opportunities for you to complete the Maryland Special Education Survey that I just referenced. Um, and we're also gonna have great activities for the kids. We'll have some arts and crafts. We're gonna have a moon bounce. We're gonna have face painting. We have a DJ coming. So um, the, the big thing that you all need to know though is there is not childcare provided. So while it is a family event, my suggestion is bring somebody with you, right? Who can maybe take your kid to the moon bounce while you go to um, one of the workshops or you and your kids can walk around to all of the tables together because a lot of the tables will have giveaways um, that are also fun and exciting for your child. So um, it's, a, it's a great event. It's an opportunity for you to really um, make connections uh, with the resources that we provide and that are community resources. So again, Saturday, May the 11th from 10 until one at Montgomery Blair High School. And then I think my last plug is for upcoming workshops which be the next slide. Yeah, so again, this is just a reminder that we do post all of our workshops on uh, my webpage, uh, which is the family support. And actually it's also on the special education page. Um, we have two ways of passing out information to you and that's on the Twitter, Twitter site or X, I guess it's now called, um, and the MCPS special education Facebook page. So if you're not already a member for those things, I would suggest you join because we do push out flyers and information about, um, you know, basically things to know. Uh, we are running this month um, two workshops on March 6th and March 13th that are specifically for students basically who are accessing or pursuing alternative learning outcomes. Um, we realize this is kind of a specialized population, but this is also, um, in connection to requests that we've had from families. So uh, those workshops will be on behavior and community resources. Um, and we will have uh, that flyer will be pushed out to all families that that would um, uh, connect to. Um, so that is on March 6th and also again on March 13th. And then on March 14th for our PEP parents, uh, we are having our workshop on the PEP to kindergarten transition. So, you know, we have a lot of parents who have questions and concerns like, what's that look like? And so this is a great chance for you to hear from our parent educators at Central Office who will talk a little bit about, um, you know, what it looks like and what the different programs are um, or different services that are provided. You know, a lot of times parents have that angst, right? And so this is just a chance for you to, to hear about that transition and um, the resources that are available. And I think I tried to rush, um, so I apologize to the interpreters. Um, the website link didn't work. Oh. For the survey? Yeah, Christine, is that for the survey or is that for the 
the actual website. Okay, so Derek, thankfully, is our tech guy who's here. So he'll be able to, to help us with that one. Um, but I think that's it for me. I, I um, appreciate your time. And uh, special ed fair, please make sure you write that down. Thank you, Mary Beth. We appreciate you coming in all the way from Blair. <laughs> all right. Sharon Norcio, where are you? There we go. Just a little slow to unmute tonight, but hello. <laughs> so um, hello, greetings, everyone. Um, Rec Department, we are super excited that um, we opened our SHRAC, our Silver Spring Recreation and Aquatic Center, opened last weekend, packed house, lots of really exciting things. The building is about 90% complete, but great big pool. Everybody, Everything is really um, brand spanking new, shiny, wonderful, fabulous, every top of the line, brand new thing that we could put in a rec center, we did. There's an indoor playground, there's swim features, there's lots of classrooms. Um, so that's awesome. They're just, and this weekend, Montgomery County is hosting the National Myrmicon Conference at that center. If you haven't heard of Myrmicon, it is quite the thing. Um, so definitely they're doing a lot of free activities for families. If anybody has um, children who are interested in aquatics or mermaid land, you can visit this weekend that is down in Silver Spring. Um, our spring registration is open. Camp registration is open. Um, and we are just moving forward. So if anybody has any questions, I have still been getting phone calls from the workshop that Mary Beth and I worked on um, about camps and programs. And with that one, um, I'm, I'm still getting parents. So, so if somebody's left me a message, I am still working my way through those because um, I get a couple, it's sort of like you answer one question and then sometimes other things come up. And as people are going through their IEP meetings, um, you know, sometimes that that is changing. We are looking at Glen Allen, but because of the school projects, um, we may be moving to another school, but um, just stay tuned. I will update you as soon as we have any information, but um, recreation is good. If you have questions, please reach out and let me know, and I will do my best to find answers for you. All right. Stacy, you're up for Brooke. Yeah, I'm going to speak on behalf of Brooke. She couldn't join us tonight, but she wanted me to, to share some um, events that are coming up for the Down Syndrome Network of Montgomery County, and this year... Um, is a, a new Rock Your Socks program that aims uh, to bring the Down Syndrome awareness locally and around the world um, or to celebrate World Down Syndrome Day. So I'm going to drop some information in the chat so you can access um, uh, the information for Rock Your Socks program. There's also some uh, additional workshops coming up and I will drop the links in there. There's several workshops uh, that, that deal with sexuality and some workshops for caregivers and some additional workshops for individuals with intellectual needs. So I will drop all of that in the chat for you to access. We're also um, going to be linking, uh, the re a request was made to, to have a copy of the links that we share in the chat on our website and we will post those as well. So if you miss it in the chat, we'll post it on our website too so you can have access to the resources. Okay, just coming right back to you, Sharon. The question in the chat was, is support available for our kids for the camp that offers SSL hours, summer leadership challenge? And then there was also a request, Sharon, for your email in the chat. Oh, I will be glad to drop my email in the chat. Um, so for the SSL hours, it is a volunteer program. And last year we did have two young folks who participated in that program. And we were able to navigate what they needed in terms of support. It's not always realistic to have a one-on-one -on -one when you're trying to volunteer. Like we can't get a volunteer for a volunteer. But what we were able to do is things like first aid and CPR is one of the core goals of that program is that folks get that. So we were able to get materials in advance. We were able to extend their skills testing, um, give them minimal prompts during testing, extra time if they needed it. Um, I, one of the folks needed the questions read to them for this test. So we're willing to work with families to see what they need and figure out a path to success. So it's part summer leadership challenge is partially about job skills, job ready awareness, getting first aid CPR trained as well as community outings. So it is a really 
active, a vigorous agenda. And so, yes, we can provide support. It just doesn't always look like a volunteer to support the person in the program. Thank you. And then I saw one other one, which was whether or not we could recommend camps for teens with autism. Um, the parent is having a hard time. I know she left her email in the chat. Amy, I'm going to ask you for your help just to grab that email and maybe we could match her um, with some references or resources from the autism um, website. And I have some as well, Pia. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you, Diane. So we, we do have some camps uh, and definitely openings for our teens um, who happen to be on the spectrum. And um, the only caveat to that is we do not do personal care, but we definitely have folks that um, a wide range of um, behaviors and functioning abilities in that camp. But that so we actually have an elementary, a middle and a high school. So we break out the middle and the high schoolers where we can. Are there any for elementary? And yes, the definitely elementary age. We have full program, full day programs, which run nine to four. And then we also have camps that run after ESY during the ESY July window. And those camps run from like 1230 to 530. So the ESY bus would take them directly to camp. So we have those as well as inclusion opportunities. There's way more inclusion opportunities for the little guys because most camps stop at 12. Thank you, Sharon. Of course, happy to be here. Next slide. All right, so now it's time for our public comment. Is Julie, and I apologize, is it so? Or Sue? Yes, you so. did very well, so. <laughs> okay. All right. I am here this evening because I have learned that MCPS, for budget reasons, has decided to cut technology monitoring software for all schools in the county for the next year. I am requesting that MCPS continues to fund Go Guardian or a substitute for special needs programs. Many special needs students are visual learners and educational computer apps can help them to access the curriculum more fully. Unlike neurotypical peers, they need the assistance of technology monitoring software to stay on target. MCPS has indicated that when it looked at staff usage, only about 20% of teachers use it regularly. That data, however, does not appear to look specifically at the usage level in special needs programs. Special needs classrooms represent just a fraction of the county's total classrooms and continuing to fund GoGuardian for them would still be a large overall savings for the county. In the last couple of days, I learned of another MCPS decision that hugely impacts special needs children. I learned that Darnstown Learning Center, which currently is a contained autism program, will be shifting to a general learning center. This is a terrible decision. The program at Darnstown is carefully crafted to deliver specially designed instruction to autistic students. When other special needs children are included and staffing ratios become less favorable, how will the school continue to deliver specially designed instruction to autistic kids? The current students were placed at the Darnstown Learning Center precisely because the county determined that their needs could not be met in a general learning center. Just last week, I attended an online presentation for the community where MCPS special needs educators and administrators spoke about the various elementary school options for autistic children and Darnstown's program was discussed. There was a high level of interest from parents in Darnstown's program as there is every year. Every parent of an autistic preschooler who needs additional support hopes to place their child in Darnstown's program. They are stakeholders as much as the families of current students in Darnstown's Autism Learning Center. It's a model to be replicated. We need more programs in the county that look like Darnstown, not get rid of the only learning center program tailored for autistic students' needs. If Darnstown's program shifts to a general learning center model and the ratio of adults to kids in the classroom become less favorable, the need to continue funding technology monitoring software become even more acute. I recognize that the county has budgetary concerns, but it does seem that the most vulnerable students, the special needs students of the county, are being disproportionately impacted. I am just a mom trying to advocate on behalf of my autistic son and others like him. I am requesting that CCAC and every concerned parent in the county do the same. 
Thank you for your time. All right. We have um, the Autism Society with us today, and I'm very happy to have uh, Kristen Letnick and Melissa Rosenberg uh, present to us. So you can come off mute now. Thank you, Kia, and congratulations. <laughs> uh, we're very happy to be here uh, tonight. We have a few slides to share with you just to give you a little bit of information about our organization. Um, and uh, so I'm Melissa Rosenberg. I'm the executive director and um, got here tonight, Kristen Letnick, who's our resource coordinator here in Montgomery County. Thanks so much. Okay. All right, go ahead. So uh, we are the Autism Society of Maryland um, as of last fall. And before that, for 30 years, we were the Howard County Autism Society. And, and like a lot of these groups got started with parents um, coming together at a time when autism was something that a lot of people didn't know about. Um, they met one another very informally and, and put together really this terrific organization um, that eventually added staff and, um, you know, for many years was very active in Howard County and continues. And, and then as, as we said, we, we expanded last fall officially to um, Montgomery County and Anne Arundel after a period of a lot of growth, very youngest, maybe 18 months, um, all the way up into really, we're starting to see um, senior citizens and providing them with, with all kinds of different resources. And this is one of our, uh, these are all our, our folks, our families, our children, our adults. So we serve about 8,000 individuals, um, which is what we did last year. And, and these are the folks that we serve, you know, self-advocates, family members. Um, we get a lot of calls from educators, providers. We do trainings uh, for businesses, agencies, uh, different community groups, rotary, um, churches, recreation centers. Um, swim centers, all kinds of, of different folks would come to us for assistance. And these are just a few of the things that we do. Um, information and resources, that's really, really the hallmark of, of what we do. Uh, lots of calls into us and, and, and they, you know, if you're in Montgomery County and Kristen's going to talk here in a little bit and give her contact information, you can call us for all kinds of information. Um, if it's a new diagnosis, if you need adult services, um, mental health resources, all kinds of different questions that we get. Special education guidance. Uh, we do have a um, consultant on staff for um, Howard County, and we're adding one for Anne Arundel. We work very closely with X Minds. I'm sure you're all familiar with them. Great group uh, in Montgomery County, and uh, we do refer to them for, for a lot of the special education questions. We have a Spanish language resource coordinator, and as you might imagine, she's very busy. She's covering all three counties. We have a lot of families who need those resources in their own language, um, and lots of support groups, most of which are, are virtual for families and caregivers. We have one in Spanish that has over 100 members, and we have an adult sibling group as well. We have an adult social group in Howard County, and Kristen has started one up in Montgomery County, uh, lots of social and fitness activities. A couple of weeks ago, we had, uh, in partnership with X Minds, a really fun bingo night at uh, We Achieve in Silver Spring. We do a lot of pool parties, yoga, picnics, adaptive recreation, just to bring people together in a really welcoming atmosphere that's very accepting, sensory friendly. We do lots of education on inclusion and neurodiversity and advocacy on a local, state, and national level. Now, this is our 911 flagging program, and, and it's been in operation since 2012. And, and I know that Montgomery County had one um, that they were working on. I believe that it passed last year. You guys might be more aware. I know we provided some um, supportive testimony so that you could flag your address to first responders, anybody coming to your house. Um, would and it's totally voluntary, would know um, there's a child with autism, may elope, uh, sensitive to loud sounds, um, somebody with Alzheimer's, mental health diagnosis, anything like that, so that first responders would be aware as they approach the residents. Okay. Um, our autism hiring program was created um, really to fill a gap. So these are folks who are um, really very talented, skilled individuals who have high school 
diplomas, lots of skills, some college, maybe advanced degrees. We're working with um, the Workforce Montgomery under a grant through them. Um, that ongoing support, the training for employers, we've had really great success. Um, we just received a congressional grant to take the program up to Towson University and the Husband Center um, this spring through the Department of Labor. I'm very excited about that. And um, if anybody's interested, the next deadline is March 15th. We'd be happy to talk to you about it. We've got some terrific employers and, um, um, you know, looking for more candidates and, and employers all the time. Okay, so slide. This is Patuxent Commons. It's a 76 unit housing development we're working on. We're hoping the shovel will grow, go into the ground um, this this uh, summer. And, you know, like, like many people, we are concerned about the lack of affordable housing for individuals with disabilities. And so this will be deeply affordable, but have a really unique concept of an intergenerational plan. So it's 25% disabilities, and the balance will be for seniors and families. Again, deeply affordable. There are three units where you could live um, if you have a disability living on um, uh, social security. It's close to shopping and it's right in, in Columbia, Maryland. So this has been 12 years in the, in the making and again, hoping to break ground this summer. Okay. These are our communication boards. And um, I know Sharon is very familiar. We were really happy to, um, to share the idea a couple of years ago with Montgomery County. Um, we donated several to elementary school playgrounds in Howard County. They're now on every elementary school playground there and a couple of the parks. And it allows non-speaking children to just point and um, communicate their ideas rather than or and their needs rather than uh, carrying mm -hmm. around um, assistive technology. Uh, they're also in libraries. They're great at pools, anything like that. They can come in different sizes, indoor, outdoor. And um, so this is just a, a sample of what that looks like. Okay. And our vaccine initiative, which is um, again, a grant funded program we're trying to address some inequities in vaccine delivery for the disability community. We have a vaccine clinic, if anybody's interested, Monday night in Columbia. It's sensory friendly and um, shots are available at no cost for those who don't have insurance coverage. Okay. Just, just a sampling of some of our, our um, important events of the year. I'm sorry for the dog. <laughs> Um, as I said, we just had bingo. Uh, we'll be working on Autism Acceptance Day in Howard and in Arundel County and really excited to partner with Montgomery County this year on um, April 6th at the Shine Brighter event. I hope you guys will all come out to Wheaton Regional Park that day. Um, we have a couple uh, big fundraisers, which are a cornhole tournament and, and walk. Um, the walk is in every uh, October and um, we also do some pool parties mm -hmm. and picnics in between. So, um, okay. And this is just kind of our, we call our mantra, that there's a place for every person with autism in our world, a place of value and a place of worth. And um, that's really why we do the work that we do. So um, hope that we can, you know, we look forward to partnering with more groups in Montgomery County and helping families uh, wherever they are and adults. And so I hope that you'll reach out to us. I think we're on the last slide now. And I'm sorry that Kristen um, wasn't here. You have her contact information there. Um, we have lots of events, support groups. All the schedules are on our website, which I can put in the chat. And uh, again, please feel free to reach out if we can do anything at all um, to help you. There you go. Aww. All right, that's great. Thank you. And I'm happy to answer any questions. All right. Well, your information will be posted. Um, I do want to ah, thank you for this thank announcement. You. <laughs> yes, go go right ahead. You can announce it. <laughs> no, there's the vaccine clinic. Thanks so much for putting that up. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, good. Very good. 
So a sensory friendly vaccine clinic, um, we did want to make sure you were aware of this information. This is certainly uh, fantastic because, um, you know, this is the information that few of us get to know. So we want to put it out as much as possible. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, thanks for the time. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, Shine Brighter. Shine Brighter is on the April 6th, Wheaton Regional Park. I'm looking for the time. Sharon might know better than I do. 11 to 2 is what I have, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And we'll we'll be there uh, along with a lot of other great groups. Um, Our breakout rooms, we certainly can help you. Um, but for your interest, breakout room is going to be the transition from pre-kindergarten to kindergarten. And breakout two will be elementary to middle and middle to high. And then breakout room three is high school to post-secondary. 